the presentation today is utilizing life insurance as an alternative to the survivor annuity options. It's not a black and white um, move. There's some there's some specific provisions you need to make sure you're aware of, and we're going to go over that today. Let me bring Terry off a hold, and we'll get started. Terry, you there? I'm here. Okay. Uh, again, pension alternatives using life insurance to the survivor annuity option um, for birth. And I will turn it over to you, Terry. Sure. Well, good morning. And today we're going to talk about pension maximization strategies as I've been one-on-one -on -one training with you. We've gone through some sample reports and have been educating you on how to deliver the report. And today we're going to focus on the pension max strategy and where's the sale and how do we find the money and when does it make sense to bring this conversation up with a federal employee. So, Jeff, could we bring up uh, the summary page of the report? I've pulled just three pages off the head benefit report. And the first page, you can just scroll down to the retirement annuity section. The monthly retirement annuity for this 50-year-old, as we lay the floor here, um, salary is $81,175. They've got 22 uh, years and eight months of service. And it's looking like at the end of the 30 years, uh, the annuity without survivor in this case would be 2,162. Annuity with survivor, 1,946. Survivor annuity, 1,081. And the cost to provide this benefit, $216. Also notice that this individual is overfunding the TSP and that they're sitting with a good $50,000 in the G fund, so they're fairly conservative. And so when we look at where would we get the money on a pension max strategy? Well, first and foremost, as you recall, we have to verify if the FEHB health insurance is important to this particular individual or not. Most of the time, they're going to be interested in maintaining the FEHB health insurance into retirement. And so we either have to offer them this 50% annuity or perhaps a 25% annuity. And so with our strategy today, we're going to assume that we drop this individual to a 25% survivor annuity. And so we have about $108 that we can work with coming from the FERS annuity in retirement. The second area that we might address, where would we find the money uh, for the pension max strategy, is taking a look at their deductions and having a conversation about what type of a tax return they receive each and every year. Are they getting four or 5,000 back or are they cutting it pretty close? If they're getting thousands of dollars back, we might ask them to consider uh, getting with their accountants and evaluating an adjustment to their deductions to free up some money. Or if they're very conservative people, uh, we might take their fixed or their G contribution and transition some of those dollars from TSP to the cash value of the life insurance product. So depending on everybody's individual need will depend on where we go after the assets and how much overfunding we're interested in doing in the life insurance product. The next slide we want to look at is the annuity and survivor benefit, which would be the next page, Jeff. We've all seen these pages. In this particular case, this individual at age 67 will have accumulated a cost on the 50% plan of 29000 $493, and at age 77, we'll have invested 61175 
keep in mind we'll divide those numbers by two with a 25% survivor benefit. So we'll be at about 15 and 30 for easy math as far as the cost to provide a 25% annuity. That's money that is going back to the federal plan, and we want to help them understand the family plan, which is the pension max strategy. Let's go to the next slide, planned and delayed retirement, Jeff. And basically what we want to be able to show is the monthly survivor annuity. If you go out to age 67, we'll be right around $1,750. $1,800, so $900 of um, that benefit could come from pension max on a more tax advantaged payout option versus the FERS annuity, which will be taxable. Now, I like to evaluate the option B coverage along with the pension max strategy. So if we've had the conversation with this individual, and they plan to carry some insurance into retirement, we can utilize the option B money into this strategy, get them starting to build some cash value early on, and levelize the premium and stop the bleeding on those Bs. Most federal employees don't realize how much of the option B they're carrying, and when you have the conversation with them, moving into retirement planning, they weren't planning to keep all of it, or maybe in some cases any of it, because it becomes too expensive. So as our job is to educate them on some alternatives, we're going to look at the GPM Life Company today with a UL product and putting on top a sum of decreasing annual insurance riders. So we'll have a term insurance on top of a permanent insurance all in one plan which will minimize some of the cost along the way and allow for cash buildup. I'd like to take them to the Fegley calculator now and run through how to come up with the increasing cost with running the scenario. So in this individual, uh, we're going to go with a current salary of 85000 And this individual, Jeff, is 50 years old. And they've got options A, 5 of B, and 5 of C. So we'll hit the calculate. They're not a postal employee. And then it's going to give us the re-verification. And you hit next. And here comes the cost of insurance. So we can see that this individual currently is spending $69.70 per pay period for all of this coverage. Some of you have asked on the report, how do we know what the A cost, the B cost, the C cost? Very easily come onto this website, run your report, and you'll have it from OPM. It won't be Joe Advisor telling them what it's costing them in the future. It's OPM telling them what it's costing in the future. So this individual has 425000 of current option B and is currently paying $55.25 biweekly for that coverage. So there we come up with another 111. So if we have $111 right now current for option B and potentially in the future $108 for 25% cost savings on the annuity, we're at roughly $218 of monies that we could transition to the pension max strategy without really even going looking for other dollars. If you'll scroll down, Jeff, I want to show them the option B increases on the uh, next couple of pages. It'll take you to page three. So on option B, there we went. 
On option B, you can see at age 55 when we have the increase, we're going to be looking at 97.75 per pay period. That's going to now jump to $195.50, and then at age 60, this coverage is going to go to 442, and then 597, uh, 527, and 969. So it's out of reach of these federal employees. So our solution is to consider the GPM Life product. If you could bring up that quote, Jeff, please. So here we've laid the ground floor. We are showing them what's going on with their benefits. We're showing them what's going to happen to their insurance costs. And now we're going to provide a solution to their problem. And so on the GPM Life uh, product, we know that we had 410,000 of basic life in the B. I'm assuming I had a little bit of a conversation with this individual and they had a little overkill. They didn't really realize they needed uh, that much insurance anymore. So they were okay with us starting with a death benefit of 344,828. So I used 100,000 of initial universal life permanent and insurance, it's the Unimark product. I assume 50-year-old male standard non-tobacco, and I'm adding the DARE rider. Now, GPM Life is catered to military personnel and federal employees, and this specific product was designed to fit this pension max strategy. I've had other insurance folks tell me that they can beat this concept and then they go run the quote and they can't do it. So the the thing that makes this policy work and allows the cash buildup is that the decreasing term is on top of the UL. So you have two things going on. You've got cash accumulating and you've got uh, extra death benefit early on. So if we take a look, I utilized $210 of monthly premium, and I assumed a level A. Obviously, if this individual was truly interested in building a ton of cash, we might look at an option B, increasing UL with the DARE rider. So we can structure it many different ways. We'll also notice that we have a terminal illness benefit built into this plan and I'm told that we're going to have chronic and critical by the first of the year built into these plans. So we'll have critical, chronic, and terminal moving forward. Jeff, if we could go to page seven of the quote, please. Page seven of the quote, um, and keep in mind we're in the lowest interest rate environment today uh, that the company has been in their history, and this particular policy is still crediting 4.7%. The death benefit that we're going to start out with is 344828 and we're going to start accumulating some value in year one on the $2,520 we are accumulating. We've got to, of course, go some time in the policy to start the cash surrender value. But as if we scroll down 10 years, we've accumulated just over 17,500 of cash with a cash surrender value of 14,000 in some. And you'll see that we've reduced the death benefit down to 295,373. And so the decreasing term is very minimal as it starts to come down. So if they've got mortgages that are going to be paid off in 10 years, children that they're not going to be so responsible for, uh, this is a good avenue. They weren't keeping all their B anyway. If you go out 20 years into the policy, we've still got 230000 plus of death benefit, and we've got 34583 of cash value and surrender value. If we look 
back to, and I won't ask you to go here, Jeff, but if we look on the illustration that we had back in the beginning, at age 77, there's 61,175 of cost, so roughly 30,000 of cost at age 77. So we've actually, at 4.7%, exceeded the cash value of what they would have paid in to have a 50% annuity. So decent cash accumulation, decent death benefit. And if we'll scroll down a little farther, Jeff, we'll see later in life uh, the policy is overfunded and never runs out of cash value. I utilized $1,400 of monthly income on this individual. Um, the government personal mutual life policy, page 12, Jeff, is designed in the software, and you'll learn this on the 26th when we spend time with GPM Life, that you put in, if you want to create an income for the pension, you decide what the income monthly should be based on the spouse's age and the current monthly income amount you want to illustrate. That's how the software calculates the death benefit. So you'll see here the DARE plus base up at, up at the top, Jeff. You'll see that the DARE, in the second column, DARE, decreasing annual insurance rider plus base benefit equals 344,823. If this individual took out this plan and was immediately killed in an accident, the spouse could take the 344823 or 1400 a month for the rest of their life. At age 60, the death benefit had reduced to 282, 252, still 1400 available. They have the decision to take the monthly income or to take the death benefit should they lose the spouse. Now, if this spouse passes before our federal employee insured, then our, obviously our employee has decisions to make. Is it a value to keep this policy in force? Do I want to take some of that cash? Do I want to reduce the face and keep the policy? Do I just want to cash and take the value and, and move along? So that individual, the federal employee, will have the opportunity to decide what to do with this pension max at that time. So it's a flexible option to building value for the family. And gosh forbid, if mom and dad were killed simultaneously, there's a death benefit for the children. So in my opinion, this is a much better option to have a family plan versus, you know, 100% over to the federal plan. And part of what we're going to be training on on the 26th is how to design these software illustrations to get them to do what you want to illustrate. And then we're going to dump those quotes into a sales track that leads them right down to the path to saying yes to this. So I would like to make sure that everybody on the call today has gotten the link to enroll for the 26th of the training session with Jay Moyer and myself at GPM Live. Uh, there was a glitch with some of those uh, links that went out. So if your link was bad, Jay sent the link out directly. If you didn't see that, uh, do a search for Jay Moyer in your search bar and the link should pop up. If you still don't have a link, please email me today at terrys at fedresource.com so we can get a new link out to you. This is a training you do not want to miss. Uh, Jeff, we could open it up for questions if you'd like, or did you want to add anything to the presentation? No, I think the, um, for those attending, if you haven't received the invite, uh, let us know right now. You can uh, type it in the, the chat section or go off listen only and let us know.
we can also open it up to any questions on the life insurance alternative. Um, you know, as you pointed out, Terry, uh, something that needs to be stated, and maybe you can get into a little more depth on this, is the uh, health option uh, at the 25% survivor annuity. I think right. sometimes that's overlooked, and um, that's a mistake you cannot make. That's the that that needs to come up in the fact find data collection part of the process. I'm starting to talk to them right on data collection if maintaining the FEHB in retirement is important. Then I ask them again when I'm going over the report. And I have a copy of a report, they have a copy of a report, and I'm CYing myself, and I will make a note right on the copy of my report that maintaining FEHB is or is not important as of this date. Okay. Do we have any questions out there regarding Anything in the life insurance week has been um, replacing FEGLI and pension alternatives using the life products. So this is a good time to ask. Okay, if there's no questions, uh, Terry, thank you. As usual, Thanks. thank you. A rebroadcast will go out. Uh, look for an email from Joy Landers and let us know if uh, if there's any documents that um, that we've gone through today that you'd like to have. Um, thanks to everyone. Next Friday we will not be having a session because of the Thanksgiving holiday, but we'll pick it up in two weeks. And this concludes our presentation for this morning. Thank you.